Yeah. Well, everybody, welcome to Waiter to Win, another episode. Uh, very excited about uh, the way the show has been growing. Our views are just growing uh, enormously, which is which is positive for us, and we hope that we are making the impact that we really have the intention to in terms of um, finding winners. And uh, who better than South Africa's latest champion jockey, Lyle Hudson, to help us through the Saturday card at Turf and Teen. Lyle, it's a pleasure to have you on Waiter to Win. Thank you very much. Um, it was only uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago that I watched my first show, Waited to Win, and I've been pretty hooked since then. So I'm um, glad I got the call up uh, to, to go through this meeting with you guys. Well, there you go. See, it's the guys at the bottom there, Daryl and Darren. They, that's why you hook, because they give winners, these guys. They know what they're talking about, eh? <laughs> but, yeah, Clyde, uh, I just want to I just yeah. want to personally congratulate Lyle on a stellar <laughs> season. Um, <laughs> and I wish you everything of the best. I hope you continue going from strength to strength and you'll do us proud in Japan. So yeah, what a fantastic season you've had. And uh, I'm sure the confidence is high compared to a few seasons ago when you, when you first uh, started um, entering Japan. And uh, I think you're, I think you're on a different level. So. No, thank so you very much. much. No, awesome. Thanks so much. I appreciate the kind words. Yeah, Darren, I mean, uh, Darren being a, you know, he follows the cult country Monday through Sunday. And um, Lyle, Darren, at the end of the day, I mean, he participates in almost every center, doesn't he? Yes, for sure. Um, Lyle's probably one of the better jockeys I've seen in a very long time. Um, I don't compare jockeys to the, such greats as Pierce Stratum, but Lyle's right up there. Um, brilliant stuff, riding full of confidence. Well balanced, uh, perfect timing. Um, yeah, just great. Excellent. Okay, well, lots of winners came this season. And I want to just... TV. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Lyle. And so, uh, thanks, Darren, very much. And yeah, Darren, positive about Lyle's uh, um, contribution to the season. And if I may, just on on this particular slide, uh, uh, Lyle, just take you through some of the uh, you know the memories, if I may. And if we go back to 2018, this is. Um, when Robert Moore, your academy master, was handing over the trophy to you, when you won both the Apprentice and the Jockey Award in that year, am I correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, look, it was one of those sort of right, right place at the right time sort of year. Of course, I'd worked really hard to become champion Apprentice. And, you know, someone I'd looked up to my whole career, Anthony Del Pesce, unfortunately, um, had his, his uh, career-ending injury. And it was from there that, you know, I was in like about second or third place. And I said, you know, like I owe it to someone like that to, to now go and really push on and win this title, which I uh, fortunately did and, and built on my career from there. So um, it was almost, I, I wouldn't say a turning point in my career, but it was really when I stepped on the gas and, and went to go rack up as many winners as I could. Yeah, and you did indeed. And uh, quoting from your Instagram account, where you say one of the most special evenings of my life was last night at the Equus Awards, where I became South African champion apprentice, South African champion jockey, and you also got the Special Achievement Award as well, which was certainly a, a, certainly a great memory. And, and yes, where no, you, fantastic. And, and where you're at now, uh, Lyle, in terms of now concluding your third championship, I mean, this season in particular special, challenging for many people, as you well know, through COVID, et cetera. In fact, the last two seasons haven't been, uh, haven't been easy. But your fiancé now, Hannah, who, who I've um, included in this presentation, uh, a special year for you too, because it it was when you proposed to her in this current season too. Am I correct? Yeah, that's correct, and um, it's actually all gone a step further now. Um, for traveling reasons, we got married in court. Oh, we're going to have our we're going to have our wedding in um, January. Thank you. And on today, the thirty first of July, so the last day of the season, um, we woke up, showered, got ready to travel down to Durban, and the message came through that. It's all been uh, approved, and she's officially Mrs. Hewitson as well. So, Mrs. Hewitson, um, well done. Well a great season. <laughs> very, very nice. So she must be very excited. Congrats. Please pass on our congratulations to her, and well done uh, to you. So that's very, and, and, and Hannah being, um, I met Hannah a few times, and uh, her, her relationship with the sport is, is uh, pretty much as deep as yours to the extent that she rides, you know, she was a work rider and rides horses. And she understands the challenges of the jockey because the jockey's career is not an easy one, especially if you're not a lightweight and you battle with weights, et cetera, like, like some jockeys do. And 
uh, I remember through my own relationship with our own family, with jockeys, mood temperaments, you have a bad day and the punters and the so on have a go at you. So that she has that understanding of the jockey, a jockey's life, is, I think is very important for you too. It certainly is. Um, yeah, like you say, she's, she's well um, esteemed in the, in the industry. So uh, it helps a lot with having her understanding and her support. Um, it definitely makes things a lot easier. And I can tell you, um, she's like the special weapon at Terry's Yard. She's really, really good back at the track. So um, we get a lot of good feedback and certainly helps to, to racking up the winners. Excellent. Okay. Well, um, it has a moment at the bottom here where you, um, again, from your account, where you met with uh, um, the champion, Mace Roberts himself, uh, 11 times South African champion jockey, British champion jockey. Just a legend, isn't he? Oh, certainly is. And uh, when I was in Japan, um, the biggest or most popularity I got was because I said I knew Mace Roberts. Everyone wanted to, to touch me just because I knew Mace Roberts. So, um, yeah, all over the world, an absolute champion. And um, this season, more than, more than any, I've, I've got closer to him, written him a lot of winners and um, really enjoyed learning a bit more. Yeah, and he's enjoying training too. Well, congratulations from Waiter to Win to the champion trainer, Justin Snaith. To you, Lyle, I mean, there in itself, 263 winners. I mean, that's just fantastic. Well done. Thank you very much. Yeah, like, as I said, a, a splendid season, um, but all down to the support and really grateful that I could make the most of the opportunities uh, this time. And I would imagine you would have ridden winners for Suzette for you as well. Am I correct? Champion owner. Thank you. Especially in PE, when I started going um, halfway through the season, had many, many winners for her. So... Um, also great for the game. I think Chris Neekirk was on a turf talk earlier and saying how um, it really is, is something special for, for the game um, as well for her to go and win. So uh, to the Fulyun family, congratulations. Absolutely. Well done to her. It's great with all her horses and the input and her family and the support that they give the game. And again, champion breeders, Clava Flay Stud, always putting up world-class performances uh, no matter the circumstances, so well done to them. Your journey in Japan now, Lyle, I mean, um, let's just talk about how long ago was it when you were in Japan? I think I got to Japan in um, February, if I'm, I'm correct, or March, um, and had a two-month contract there, first time round, uh, maximum two months if you, if you get in. So, um, unfortunately, it wasn't that sort of height of, of COVID uh, when COVID just started, so crowds in that um, weren't really around, which is something I missed out and hopefully can see a bit more this time around. But um, yeah, it was a special, special two months and definitely a highlight in my career this far. And, and winners, how many winners did you have, happen to bank then when you did? Uh, uh, um, 19 winners in 17 meetings. Wow, that's excellent. Eh? And uh, uh, Japan racing, I mean, I, from what I hear, I've had a few um, colleagues that have been into Japan. I believe it's absolutely phenomenal racing. Incredible. Of course, um, Firstly, the, the equine individuals themselves are, are really special uh, when you get up to that top level. Um, super fit. The training, I, I learned so much so much more. They do um, so much more uh, longer endurance training and, um, and you, these horses just take to it so well. Um, the racing itself is, is well paced. Um, very, very clean, but strict, strict, strict. And the times these horses do, I mean, they're finishing 33 chains from the 600. Um, on a regular basis. It's incredible. Wow, unbelievable. Clockwork, eh? it's incredible. I mean, the whole outfit from the, bit, from the moment the sun rises to the moment the sun sets, I believe, is just it, unreal. So now, I believe there's a little bit of a hiccup in terms of your journey to Japan now. Going, What's the latest news? When do you leave South Africa? Still um, no update. It was supposed to leave um, on Sunday the 8th, um, but with the, the visa issues now because of COVID and that, and um, we're trying to find some loopholes through it. Um, it could be next week, two weeks, who knows? Um, just sitting tight at the moment. Um, there's no rush because my three months won't be affected by when I leave. Um, but obviously, if we can get going sooner rather than later, it'd be fantastic. Excellent. Well, that's really well done to you. And uh, thanks very much. So we'll, 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 you'll let us know as soon as, uh, or the country know when you do go. And we wish you, Mr. and Mrs. Hewitt, and everything of the best when, when you guys get on that plane. Thank you. But the reality of the situation, Daryl and Darren, is that uh, Waited to Win wants to make money. And uh, Saturday, unfortunately, we've got Lyle who participates in the card. There's a look at the latest scratchings um, that we got this afternoon in the sixth and seventh race that are on your screen at the moment. Um, as far as the track is concerned, uh, you'll notice the irrigation in the last uh, 
seven days has been about 12 mils with a pen of 20 going as good. And there's a two meter spur at the 700 meter mark. So it's business as usual as at Turpentine, at Turpentine race course on the stand side track. There won't be any hanging about. And we'll go straight into the fourth race where, and I'll start with you, Lyle, if I may, and talk about this horse, Silver Tycoon, who they've priced up at eight to 10. Of course, their question mark around Silver Tycoon is that he hasn't run since December. Yes, um, he's a lovely horse, uh, a big, strong um, son of Silvano. Uh, I, I've liked him since day one. Um, first time out, he had excuses. It was a slow run race. He was a bit far back. He got his tongue over. He hung green, a lot of excuses. Came out full of confidence next time and absolutely smashed him uh, with, a, with a great galloping performance. Um, he had a setback from that run, hence the layoff. And I must say, coming into this race, we haven't sort of prepped him as fitness-wise, as uh, strongly as we did coming into his first two starts. So, you know, without a doubt, he'll need the run. Um, I am hoping, though, because I think a lot of him, that his class could pull him through. Um, I do think, as I said, I do think highly of him, but he's certainly not wound up um, coming into this run. So, you know, there is, there is that question mark. As I said, I'm just hoping the ability pulls him through. Okay, well, that, that, that's very interesting. And I want to bring, if I may, um, I bring Darren and Daryl in here just to talk about Silver Tycoon and one of the reasons I, I would imagine his odds on in terms of his ability, but if you have a look at his last start, Daryl, um, and over the distance and times and compared to the horses that he had run with, when I do my homework and you see here, he was up against the, um, a couple of uh, decent individuals on the, that ran on the same day. And if, if, if I have a look at them, when Silver Tycoon last ran on times, I know times are you know, probably something to be concerned about when you go around the turn, etc. but the likes of Way of the World on the same day, and um, uh, also the likes of Copper Mountain. Uh, the winner on that day was Paisley Park. That Silver Tycoon's time was so much faster. I would have thought a good bet, but Lyle a bit cautious. Yeah, Clyde, we've heard um, Lyle's opinion. Um, now, I wonder if we can get Mrs. Hewitson's opinion, because she does a lot of work riding over there. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, obviously, he's the son of Silvano, uh, very likely raced, unexposed, uh, I wouldn't read too much into the, the, the ratings of here because he could be so far ahead of the handicapper. You just have to look at his, his debut efforts. He beats us called Pamashana's Pride, who has come out to run second to Malmoose in the derby. Now, Pamashana's Pride is a 1-1-6. I think Silver Tycoon, I know he's coming into this underdone, but I do believe his class will pull him through. There's no great shakes in the field. I think if he's... If he's probably 75 to 85% uh, ready, I think he'll get the job done. Um, one, if, if you are skeptical and you want to back him up, I think I'd back him up with sweet and spicy. Now, that was a nice uh, improved comeback run after a three-month rest. And she is fairly well treated at the weight of here. And with the two and a half kgs uh, appy, um, weight coming off her back and the fact that the stable's in good form at the moment, I think she'll be thereabouts in the one chasing Silver Tycoon home. But you know what? Silver Tycoon looks like he could have a bright future ahead of him. I, I'm hoping he goes two from three and gets his season started off on the right notes. Okay. And, and uh, Darren, uh, what's your take on the opening leg of the big six? Well, I wasn't too sure. But when I studied the strength of the field, I thought that Silver Tycoon, even if he's 70, 80% fit, uh, he can get the job done. Uh, I don't see much pace in the race. So I think Lyle can place him, even if he's in a handy position. Um, he might just outstay them in the straight. Um, he's a lovely Silvana out of soft landing. We all remember how good she was. Um, I was super impressed when he won his maiden. Uh, he won going away. He's got a lovely big action. And I'm hoping that he's uh, stripped uh, fit enough to come back and win after a long layoff. So we are taking our chances in the pick six. We are bankering him. Um, I don't know if he's an 8 to 10 shot. I think uh, he, might, he may drift race time, but it's hard to say. Uh, the best of the rest, sweet and spicy. A good comeback run after a break. It wasn't a 90 handicap. He claims two and a half kilos. It brings her into the race. Um, but we are taking our chances, Silver Tycoon. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, what summarizes it is that the, 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 the quality of the opposition is not that strong. And perhaps on that basis, 
um, we can support Lyle in taking our chances in this particular event. Let's have a look at race number five quickly and just see the market here where um, Ballon d'Or's 18 to 10 favorite, uh, Darren, with Rock of Africa second choice at three to one. Tell us about tell us about the race. It, it, on, on first looks, it looks like it's an open race when you study the form. It does look like an open race, especially when you go on that form line behind Seaways. You had Ballon d'Or, Rock of Africa, and uh, Nordic Rebel within a, a length and a half of each other. And there's about a kilo swing in favor of Nor Nordic Rebel. Um, Ballon d'Or is half a kilo better off with Rock of Africa. So there's not much separating them on form. Then you got the look, likes of Stone Cold. Um, he tends to pull quite hard in his races, but if he can settle into a stride, um, he should be doing good work late. Uh, the dark horse in the race is Ward Jewel. Um, he beat Stone Cold towards the end of last year. He actually beat Stone Cold, giving Stone Cold three kilos. Now he receives four and a half. So there's a seven, a half, seven and a half kilo swing in the weights. And his ratings down to a competitive mark again. So it is open. Um, I haven't got a, a, a first selection. We are playing wide in the pick six. Okay. Those are really beautiful. Don't forget to turn the page and find World Jewel. Thanks, Darren, for that. Uh, Daryl, uh, let me ask you about um, talking about a horse like World Jewel that Darren's picked up on. You give it a chance? Absolutely. He's the dark horse in the race. Uh, Darren touched on that run. Where he, where he beats Stone Cold and he's better off at the weights. And there's also a run with um, Ballon d'Or. I think he was beaten two and a quarter lengths and he's three and a half kilograms better off. Mm. So we have to be honest, he hasn't been seen at his best in his last two starts. But if he does reproduce one of those efforts, on paper, he, do, he does have an ups upset chance. Ballon d'Or, he's got good gate speed. I think he's more consistent with the blinkers. But I just want to ask Lyle, um, does he have concerns uh, now that he's on the stand side track, the longer running, or is that not a, a, a negative for him? So I'd like to get his opinion on that. But he does, he does have a chance. I mean, what you see is what you get. He's in good form and he's fit and, and well. And then Stone Cold, like Darren says, if he settles, you know, look at his CV. He's got the beating of Puerto Manzano on the stand side track. So on his day, he's got a hell of a lot of ability, does Stone Cold. He just needs to settle in running and have that, uh, that burst at the finish, and he could certainly feature the, at, at, uh, where the chips count. So an open race. We're looking for the upsets. We've gone field in the pick six. War Jewel are roughly in the pack. Okay, Lyle, so just to answer that question, if we may, with regards to Daryl's uh, uh, concern about the inside track, um, I only had one run on the stand side track. And I'm you, does that worry you at all? It certainly was the, the, the one thing in my mind. I did think that, you know, his form over the, the stand side um, isn't as, as good. However, he did go through a sort of patch in his form after his maiden win and that where uh, all his runs weren't um, up to standard until he went and won really well. I think it was with Luke Ferraris aboard. So um, on feel, I do think he's more suited to the, the inside track. However, um, you know, reading into that stand side form line, or the longer straight form lines, I think it could also just be coincidental that, um, you know, he wasn't uh, in the pink of form at that time. So, you know, it, it definitely is one of the things for me um, to consider um, whether it's as, as suited. But I must say, you know, he's a horse that doesn't have great legs. And at the moment, he's really moving well. Um, and as you said, his, his form's been ultra consistent. So um, there's no, no negative um, to go against him. Um, in terms of his form lines. Right, yeah. He, he certainly does look like the horse to beat, although it, it is competitive. It'd be no surprise yeah. to see a horse like Ballandor win. Quite right. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, we'll have a look at the sixth race market where we go look at the Bloodstock South Africa Sales Cup now. It's a Phillies event, and you've got, uh, Lyle, you've got Supreme Best. She's odds on at 9 to 10. Um, you, you know what she's all about uh, when... Uh, uh, she put up a superb performance back in KwaZulu Natal in her penultimate start when she beat Big Burn three and a half lengths. Of course, uh, Big Burn is back in the race. One would say perhaps that she was in season and that maybe it wasn't her run, although she did run a second to you that she, she could come back and give you a bit of a, you know, something to, to be worried about. But just how good is this, this, this filly, Supreme Best, for Cornet Spice? 
Um, I, I really like her. I'm pretty confident on, of her chances um, on Saturday. I do think that she's a smart individual. Her form over the, the sprint trips when she's running the nurseries and, and the likes um, was really, really good. And all those form lines have been backed up. And going into that 1300 on uh, July day, um, I actually couldn't see her getting beat. I thought she had too much in her favor. And I thought the way the race was going to unfold, it would suit her, which it certainly did. Um, you know, Big Burn is a horse that's really improving. It was very impressive on debut. Second time out, I was tracking and I just thought he was overdoing it behind the, the, the leader. Um, so never really found a rhythm. And I do think that being a young horse improving, it should get a lot closer. Um, but I think at this stage, personally, Supreme Quest is still the right one and um, definitely one of my, my best rides on the day. It's not a question to ask you, but I suppose, because we remember the whole Rain in Holland ride and how brilliant that was. How you managed to get that over the line is still unbelievable. But in the company of Supreme Quest, and that was just a week ago. Does that worry you at all? Um, it does. Another problem. Um, that she's traveled twice. You know, she went July day, came back, went back down for Gold Cup day, come back and running. So, yes, it is tight. But when I was speaking to Mr. Spies, I said, you know, if we're going to be optimistic about it, at least that race was run pretty slow in the, I'd say, the first uh, 800 meters, which you know, meant that it wasn't an absolute gut buster. Um, but with that said, you know, if there's, that could be an excuse, you know, but I, I still think she'll, she'll be able to overcome it. She's a lovely filly with a good temperament and um, I'm trying to look only at the positive. Absolutely right. So confident, uh, Lyle. Um, Daryl, you as confident as Lyle? Yeah, Clark, there's so much in her favour. Um, I mean, Lyle Ewardson from a one draw, I think even the drop down to seven furlongs is in her favour. Uh, she holds most on form. She's having a peak run. The only negative is that race doesn't come too soon. Um, and, you know, Big Burn, like Lyle touched on, she didn't get things her own way um, when they met at Grable. Uh, she was overdoing it. And I actually see Big Burn. Big Burn has got a hell of a lot of gate speed, and she's going to bounce out. And if she gets to the front and she settles... I certainly won't be shocked to see her reverse that form. She's a full sister to catch 22. He's at his best over a mile. Even 1,800, he's been running out of his skin. So I don't believe that the distance is, is going to be a problem. I actually think it will be in her favor. And if she gets to the front, I've got healthy respect as long as she settles. One that I want to touch on for trifectas is uh, Mark's chick. I thought that was a fair enough uh, debut. I don't think it warrants winning claims over here but i'd like to follow in her next start if she gets a mile or maybe even further i think she's she could have some sort of ability about her but i think the race does certainly lie between the top two in the betting yeah maybe straight line trifectas then three four two or four three two whichever way you want to do it darren how do you how are you summarizing the supreme quest hard to beat in your view yeah supreme quest very close to a banker uh, we've opted to go the two horses but supreme quest I believe her best trip will be 1,400 meters. Um, I didn't think she would see out the mile last time, but she actually did very well uh, in running third. And from a one draw, I think Big Burn, you know, she only knows one way uh, and she, she goes handy. Uh, last time out from the wide draw, she came across, she burnt a lot of energy by pulling too hard. And if she doesn't settle, um, then Supreme Quest, uh, Quest uh, looks uh, pretty much a penalty kick. So I'm hoping Big Burn can settle better and she can run it a lot closer to Supreme Quest. My first two picks, um, anything for third. Okay, so that takes care of the running of the sixth race on the card. The seventh is the Bloodstock Living Sales Cup for the Colts and Geldings this time uh, for the three-year-olds and it's run over the 1,400 metres. And I'll come back, if I may, to, to Lyle here and chat about, um, about his ride, uh, William Robertson for Cornet Spice. Of course, part of Avon 17 to 20, they're going all out here, and Ash Fortune Stable is in great form. Aldo de Maya is here to ride, was here on Thursday, having ridden winner, etc. So, um, and and of course, there's a there's a there's form and there's collateral that one can work on, Lyle. And in particular, if I, if I go back to the penultimate start against the Bard of Avon Run, where you were beaten uh, on uh, William Robertson when you rode him the three quarters of a length, that particular occasion wasn't well drawn. You've got a much better draw today. Maybe you can just tell us a bit about the start. I mean, because I don't recall the start of that race in particular on that day. Um, yeah, he's, he's a big, big son of Rafif. Um, he won't give you much confidence going down in that, but he's a, he's a smashing looking horse. Um, that day, you know, he, he got a fair, a fair start, but 
nice thing with him is he he finds his feet very quickly and I, I would manage to get a, a positive spot and um, nonetheless you're always going to from a deep draw 1300 you're going to have to use a bit more um, getting around and getting over especially in those sort of races everyone's uh, a bit angst and they want to want to get positive so um, he definitely had to burn a bit more even last time um, positive again from a widest draw um, so this is definitely going to be much easier from a good draw um, he's got enough pace to to place himself well um, but if we look at those top four there was nothing between them um, on the the bottom of Avon run I think it was three starts ago so it'll be very close but I do think William Robinson will be suited to track and trip and once again, one of the question marks would be the same as Supreme Quest was um, the week apart traveling. Okay, so that, that's another highlight, a question mark around William Robertson. I, I want to bring Darren in here. Darren, does it go beyond Bard of Avon and William Robertson? Well, there wasn't much separating Bard of Avon, William Robertson, Team Gold and Gaudi's Masterpiece. Um, I, I thought Bard of Avon was a little bit disappointing when he won last time out. And I spoke to Andrew Fortune, and he was also disappointed. He thought he would have won by four lengths. But um, I hear that he's doing really well at home, and they're expecting a massive run. Um, I'm actually favoring William Robertson. Um, let's see how Supreme Quest goes, and if she comes back after a week off, uh, then I'll have much more confidence going into the race with William Robertson. Mm -hmm. um, that time that he ran behind Bart of Avon, he was sweating up at the start. Um, he, he was drawn wide. Um, things weren't in his favor and he still got very close and then he followed it up in the, the big feature last week uh, only a length off back, over a mile and I believe the step down back to 1400 meters is what he's looking for so William Robertson if all in order is my first choice over Bard of Avon uh, Gaudi's masterpiece caught the eye uh, in his penultimate start staying on really strongly late and team gold the best of the rest yeah, okay. So that it got so that it got that close, Daryl. Does it mean all four have to go in the pick six? Absolutely, Clyde. A little bit of luck in running might determine the outcome of this race. I just want to ask Lala uh, the, the feeling I get with William Robertson is when he when he hits the front, he's a little bit unsure and hesitant. I don't know if he if that's what's cost him his his races. Um uh that's the feeling I get at least. I must say, from, from my perspective, I, I never got that impression that he hits the front and sort of looks around. But he, he runs with his head quite low, and he's a big, heavy horse. Um, so I think it's more about like keeping him balanced and, and keeping him together because once he's obviously towards the end of the race, his horse is tired, he gets a bit more wayward, a bit more heavy. And um, for me, that's more what it felt like. He's one of those horses with that um, almost um, heavy change of leg and... Um, like I said, it's more about just being balanced on him. So I think he's honest. Um, he might be a horse in the future that could be gelding, um, but we'll leave that to the team. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think he's a dishonest horse. I think he, he gives it all. He's just um, still a bit immature and, and uh, leggy and heavy. Yeah, so uh, Lyle did touch when he doesn't give you confidence when he goes down to the start. Um, maybe this hard going and the, quite a few runs on top of each other isn't in his favor, but he certainly does have ability. And uh, if things things go the, his way in the race, he's one of the leading lights. Team Gold, now, yeah, you've got Muzi Yeni drawn one. Uh, the stable, Roy Magna, how well is he doing? Um, you know, he's going to have the, the run of the race, and I certainly won't discount his chances. And Darren touched on Gaudi's masterpiece. He was probably doing the best work later, Grable. Maybe the long, longer run is in his favor. So difficult to to separate the top four in the bet in the betting. Young horses, each improving at different stages. So we've gone all four just to save, just for safety reasons and to get, get through this leg of the pick six. Okay, well, let's talk about the eighth race then, which is a handicap. Uh, Phillies and mares, one of those races that one doesn't really like uh, when it comes to form, et cetera. But uh, Rojas, uh, you know, that, that win last time out, coming back to best, a 28 to 10 favorite here, taking on... Uh, with Lyle's ride, uh, Cordillera, Daryl, I'll start with you and stay with you for a moment. Um, let's, let's discuss Raha with 53 and a half on her back. Yeah, Clyde, that was a super, super impressive in her first uh, start over a mile. I mean, she sat up handy and she skipped and she ran all the way to the line. She wasn't giving up and uh, it was very, very impressive. The negatives are that her rating has gone up from a 77 to an 84, and she takes a steep jumping class over here. The average rating in that 
in that handicap was a 69, uh, 69, now it's a 91. But you just have to like the fact, in the manner in which she did it, because she's certainly going to be ridden in a similar fashion from one, from the one draw. She's, she'll be up handy and she's racing fits and she should be able to skip with that light weight. So healthy respect for her chances. Now, the, there's another five that we have included, the likes of Cordillera, Sultana, uh, Rio, uh, Karari, Falcon, uh, Karari, Ferrari, sorry, Rouge Lure, and, uh, and one more, Ululate. I mean, there's very little separating them on several form lines. They each chop and change. So I just want to touch on one out of those five. I think Sultana might come out trumps. I like the fact that she's back in a mile and she's showing some signs of returning to her best. So out of those five, I think Sultana will come up trumps, but I certainly believe Raha is on the upgrade. Okay, very interesting. All right, so those are the runners in, in the eighth race. Um, I'll bring Darren in here now just to talk a little bit ab about the final leg of the jackpot. Um, Darren, in, in studying your form, how wide do we go in this pick six? Uh, we've actually gone five or six runners in this race. Um, obviously, the horse to beat is Roha. I know she got a penalty for her last start, but she comes into the race with 53 and a half kilos and a one draw. And she was really impressive second run after a rest. Uh, I only get the impression that she's going to come on from that run. And she, she, I think she's the right price at around 28 to 10. Uh, Sultana, last time out, she really caught the eye late. She was staying on nicely. And the mile she is more suited to being out of a Galileo mare. Um, so she'll be my second choice. Um, of the rest, Rouge Allure, evergreen eight-year-old mare. Uh, she's never far back. She always runs an honest race. Uh, Cordillera, she's a six-year-old. She's never won over the mile. Um, she always stays on really late over the 1,400, uh, suggesting that the mile's going to suit, but she doesn't quite get it right. So she has to be included. She's very consistent. She's always thereabouts. And then Ululate won a good race last time. We can't exclude her. Okay, I'll bring Lyle in. Lyle, let's talk about uh, Cordillera and uh, perhaps touch on what Darren has noted about the 1,600 metres. Is she a better 1,400 metre horse than a miler? I have to agree with um, Darren's analysis. Um, she definitely always seems like, well, when we step to the mile, we, we should be um, ready to win, you know, but... Um, we just thought last time they almost stretched and we couldn't get going in time. And then we started to pick it up really well late. And maybe as an older horse in this harder going, um, the, the eighth villain might be, the, might be the right move. And we got a bit more confidence that it is um, now. But um, yeah, she's really consistent. She's another one like Ballandor who um, doesn't have the best of legs, but of late she's been really sound and in, in um, great condition. So um, I think she will hold her form. And from a good draw, it's her last run before going to stud. Um, I'd love it to end on a, on a, on a positive note. Big chance, uh, Cordillera, of that. There's no doubt. Thanks for that, Lyle. You also ridden Ululate before. I mean, would you, would you, I mean, hard to compare, I suppose, but would you include that in jackpots and that sort of thing? Yes, I would. Um, you know, she's a very honest horse who, who's got a sustained, strong finish. And I think um, tempo dependent is it so, certainly the type of horse that could come over the top. Um, I think a bit of value in the race uh, in a class horse is Kawari Ferrari. Some of her runs are, are smashing and it's all about putting it together. It's a little bit inconsistent, but when she gets it right, she can be a serious race horse. Yeah, we've had our money on her a few times. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So the ninth race on the card, Lyle Senescence. Let's talk about uh, Senescence quickly. And uh, the, the thing I like about her is that course and distance, she seems absolutely ideal. She seems to love it, this course, this, this distance. Yes. Um, also, another one that's, you know, barring maybe three starts ago where she just had a blip, she had a few races on top of each other. But since her maiden win, she's been very, very good and um, very consistent. She, she almost is a little bit of, um, I wouldn't say a brass, but she just seems to always do enough to get second, third. Um, but I think the biggest thing is that she, she likes to sting out the ground. So, you know, she'll run another honest race, but what, the thing that's against her is this, it's hard going. So, you know, if she can keep ticking over in the places when the rain comes, um, and if she's, she's still one to, to watch, then I think that'll be the time to put your money on. I'm not saying she can't win. She certainly can in this field. Mm. Um, but she's definitely a few lengths better uh, with this thing out the ground. 
I'll bring Daryl in quickly. Daryl, didn't uh, the, the fifth wave, did, did you make reference to the fifth wave the next time this horse runs? Watch out. Was it, if I remember your statement correctly? No. No. Um, this one? no. We said we gave her outside trifecta and quartet chance. chance pass okay. come out at big odds now. Yeah. Uh, not exactly what I want to hear about some essence. Um, she's actually my value bets on the card. Um, I love the fact that they're dropping her back in trip. You know, mm -hmm. in a recent outing, she's sort of, sort of got there and then become one paced. And I just have to keep on going back to that run out the maidens, her first start out the maidens. She was so impressive on that occasion. I just hope that she is moving well and that the ground isn't too hard for her because I think that the, the drop in trip is the, 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 the trick over here and that's going to be very much in her favor. But the race doesn't stop over there. I think uh, another one that Lyle has uh, written before, Ideal Angel. Uh, just here at the Roha form line holds up. Last night, much she never got into the race. And uh, she's got a fairly well draw. Uh, she's fairly well drawn out. And I think she'll be able to race a little bit handier. Yeah, she won't be an upset to see her finishing in the money. And one other one, Bella Rossa. Uh, she, she's always thereabouts. Now, last time it was a little bit below par effort by her standards, but she's always there about, like I say, so certainly a trifecta quartet inclusion. But you know what, Clark, despite Lyle's uh, uh, concerns, I'm going with senescence. I just hope I can see a similar ride to Grappler and we'll see Lyle and Terry back in the winner's uh, box in the last race tomorrow. What you mind it is, she's a lovely mover, so there's nothing against, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. She, I mean, and she's in great form. Obviously, she'll strip fit her. And I have to agree with you. I think she's more lethal over the miles. So, like you said, a lot in her favor. And I, I definitely won't put you off if you like her. I just know that if she doesn't win, she will make it all back to you when there when is sting out the ground. Thanks. <laughs> we, we, we're running out of time, Lyle. Uh, if we, you know, we haven't got the... We've got two, three months to wait. Three months for the rains to come. We can't wait two months. <laughs> Do the rain dance <laughs> Um... Darren, let me ask you, how do we end the final leg of the pick six here? What's the, what do we do? Our first choice and my value bet on the card is Strada Statale, the rank outsider in the race. Sure. Um, she's had two starts on the stand side track. She ran two thirds in a much higher class race. She ran third in the Yellowwood Handicap behind um, Saragon, who's rated 105 and Heart Swings was just ahead of her. Uh, who ran second in the Victor Stakes right after that run behind Sylvana's Pride. And she's dropped from an 87 down to a, a, a markable uh, a, a rating that she should be competitive once again. So she hasn't placed this year. She's been four or five lengths off them. I believe we're going to see a, a decent run from Stratus Tale uh, from a one draw. Hopefully you can get into a nice position and hopefully we can see a return to form. Uh, Senescence, I do like the fact that she's dropping back to a mile. I would give her uh, an each way chance. And then Kind Judy, uh, who stays on from the back of the field really strongly at the finish. And the stand side course is going to suit her. I think she'll be right there. Okay, so, so Keegan DeMello's on the high felt, uh, Lyle. Um... You think he's chasing the, any inside information about Keegan? Because I, I like um, his riding style too. Yeah, Keegan's very, uh, he's a very good rider. Um, no, he would be up for Mark's check of the Cox because obviously he's retained by um, Lady Laidlaw. So okay. that would be the reason for being up. Okay, that's very interesting. But I would like, I'd like to see more of him on the, on the high felt. Uh, it'd be nice to see him. Um, okay, so, so that's the final leg of the pick six. Uh, I like personally number one, Secret Lotus. I've added it into the pick six. I think put that in uh, from Paul's yard as well. Um, don't leave it out. Okay, so let's just quick, click, a quick look at the at the buy part and all of that sort of stuff. Um, you guys can take a look and see what you think. That's a 96 rem perm that uh, everyone has worked out. And um, there are two bankers in that perm for the turfing team meet uh, on Saturday. The pick six is a 17.28 uh, with the one at the back we've added. So we're bankering the five now. We're taking our chances. We believe the opposition are not strong enough. And we're hoping that that comes through. And then we've got horses, a couple of runners um, in, this, in the six and then uh, try to load up. Well, I think we're safe there. We're safe there and we're safe there. So we get through the first leg. We should be okay, I think, as far as that, as far as that slide goes. And then, Darren, you wanted to talk about your best bets. 
Yes, my best bet's code zero in race two. Uh, Lyle's actually riding the favorite there, Meteoric. Um, there wasn't much separating them on the run behind Perfect Witness, but Meteoric was having her, I think it was her, um, her fourth start, and Code Zero was making her debut. Um, Code Zero was up with the pace, and she, she just didn't find the finish that final 100. But last time out, Code Zero, uh, when Muzzy changed the stick into the left hand, she really stayed on strongly for second. And I just feel she's got that come on look about her. She's progressive. So I give Code Zero the edge over Meteoric. Uh, my value bet, Stratus Totale in the last. Um, you can always take places. You can get a decent price. Hopefully she can return to form. Okay, we'll talk to Lyle now about Meteoric and his other ride in the third. Um, Daryl, so still senescence, eh? Yeah, Clyde, I like her pro uh, profile and I like the fact that I've got a jockey with a, a just oozing confidence. So she'll be given a, a great ride and um, let's hope she just gets her head in front. Excellent. The uh, way to win double of the day comes from uh, Darren and Dabbles, uh, Darren and um, Darren and Daryl, right? Their double of the day. And uh, Code Zero is the best bet from Darren's side. And then the value bet's in essence. And that's an eight to 10 shot to play. So five to one the stretch, not a bad, you know, if you, if you want to if you want to look at that, um, there's the way to, to win double from uh, the two guys. And I asked Lyle if he wouldn't mind sharing some of his information. And uh, Lyle, um, yeah, maybe you want to just take us through that. Um, yeah, as I said, you know, uh, there's only one question mark uh, against Supreme Quest, but on paper, on her um, profile, the the distance, the course, I think there's a lot in her favour from draw one. So um, I think my, my best ride on the day. And then going to Cordillera, I just think that this type of horse is probably also going to drift. You know, she was just beaten by um, a few of those last time. And, you know, a lot of the time when you tell these horses they're going to retire, they pop up for you. So I think there's a lot of value about, um, about a horse like her in a very open race. Could be a very good card for you. Thank you, Lyle, for that. From my side, I thought the first race, um, I spoke to Grant Maroon. I wanted to ask him about this horse that he's got in the first of the work. Is it a, it's a work riders race, right? And uh, from what I saw, just having a look at the form, this horse twice as splendid. Um, two runs to date uh, over the 1160. The opposition not strong. Um, he said work, it's just been gelded. That's what I liked about him. Just recently been gelded. And um, he said, just wait, only the draw, but it's a small field. There are only eight runners up the straight, so it shouldn't be a problem. And he likes it very much. I also like twice as splendid at four to one. And in the fourth race, I'm going Silver Tycoon as well. And you can get 14 to one the stretch as far as that double is concerned. And that's from us. So don't forget, it's, we do join us every Friday night. And um, the team, we really appreciate uh, uh, you guys watching the show as often as you always do. Lyle, just in terms of your other rides, if you can just, let, let's talk about the second and third rides that you've got uh, and, and take the public through those. Um, Meteoric, um, she's a, to be honest, she's only an um, uh, honest, mediocre filly, but she's in good form and she's quite small. Um, I have to agree with Darren that the, the horse of Mr. Matches looks like an improving sort and okay. um, probably a lot more scope, and especially on that first run, um, nothing between them and with the horse that's coming on I think that that would be the horse to beat, but um, she's in, in good form. And I think that, you know, the, the way the track runs at the moment, it does suit her. So um, she'll be first or second, in my opinion. And um, then Tilly Angus, the horse that came from Snaith, actually worked Tilly Angus when he was still with Mr. Snaith, gave him a lovely deal. Some nice runs um, in between. And I just think, you know, the 1160 um, could be the answer at the moment. Um, so I'm hoping for a big run there in what also looks like an open race. Also small field, so the draw shouldn't be a worry, am I right, draw one? Yeah, I think, you know what, a lot of the time, you know, the, at Turpentine, I think it's more that the, the field and the speed tracks over to the outside, so you can get left alone sort of on the inside, but getting over well enough, it'll be um, maybe a bit like uh, Grappler in the last race. I can get over and across and uh, come with a good run. Excellent. Okay, Daryl, Darren, Anything else before, uh, you know, Lyle might be in Japan on Tuesday for all you know. Yeah, uh, what about Lyle? He, he, he's ridden Paul Peters was in the first race. I think it's a current favourite. Uh, global player, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, you wrote that last time. They dropped it in trip. Do you think he's capable of winning up the straight line? Yes, I rode him in a 1160 at 17 last time. Um, 
if I stand to be corrected, let me, yes. Um, he's, he's, a, he's got a lot of speed, but he's very one pace and he's sort of just got to keep building momentum. So I think um, this work rider, he's, he's done really well. Um, drawn two, I don't think it will be an issue because he looks to hang in. So at least then he can just let him roll and, and, and run. I think that he'll certainly be in the first three with the winning chance. Thank you. Darren, anything no, else? Well, I wish you all the best in Japan. And uh, well done. You've had a fantastic season. Um, you can't exclude you from any rides. Um, you've got to include all of them because you never know which one's going to pop up. You're very consistent. Um, just all the best. No, thank you so much. Uh, I really look forward to it and I can't wait to you know, do well and sort of help get SA Racing a, a bit more popular all over the world. So now I hope Mrs. It's, it's, it's dinner time when we're Mrs. Hewitson in the kitchen. Where is Mrs. Hewitson? No, tell me I've got to go light. <laughs> 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 okay, well done to both of you. Congratulations and thank you very much thank for you your time. Man. Have a great uh, weekend. Thank you so much. All the best. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Cheers.